Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the chapter The Living World. Let's get started with our continued topic the taxonomic categories. Taxonomic categories. Classification is not a single step process but involves hierarchy of steps in which each steps represent a rank or category. Since the category is a part of overall taxonomic arrangement, it is called the taxonomic categories and all categories together constitute the taxonomic hierarchy. Each category, referred to as a unit of classification, in fact, represents a rank and its common term is taxon. Taxonomic categories and hierarchy can be illustrated by an example. Insects represent a group of organisms sharing common features like three pairs of jointed legs. It means insects are recognizable concrete objects which can be classified and thus were given a rank or category. Can you name other such groups of organisms? Remember, groups represent category. Category further denotes rank. Each rank or taxon, in fact, represents a unit of classification. These taxonomic groups or categories are distinct biological entities and not merely morphological aggregates. Taxonomical studies of all known organisms have led to a development of common categories such as kingdom, phylum or division for plants, class, order, family, genus and species. All organisms including those in the plant and animal kingdoms have species as the lowest category. Now the question you may ask is how to place an organism in various categories? The basic requirement is the knowledge of characters of an individual or group of organisms. This helps in identifying the similarities and dissimilarities among the individuals of the same kind of organisms as well as the other kinds of organisms. Species Taxonomic studies consider a group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities as species. One should be able to distinguish one species from the other closely related species based on the distinct morphological differences. Let, let us consider Magnifera indica, Solanum tuberosum that is potato and Panthera leo that is lion. All the three names indica tuberosum and leo represent the specific epithets where the first word magnifera, solanum and panthera are genera and represent another higher level of taxon or category. Each genus may have one or more than one specific epithets representing different organisms but having morphological similarities. For example, panthera has another specific epithet called tigris and solenum include species like nigrium and melongena. Human beings belong to the species sapiens which is grouped in genus homo. The scientific name thus for human beings is written as homo sapiens. Genus Genus comprises a group of related species which has more characters in common in comparison to the species of other genera. We can say that genera are aggregates of closely related species, for example, potato and brinjal are two different species but both belong to the genus Solanum. Lion, that is Panthera leo, leopard, that is Panthera paradis, and tiger, that is Panthera tigris, with several common features, are all species of genus Panthera. This genus refers from another gener, uh, genus, Phallus, which includes cats. Family the next category family has a group of related genera with still less number of similarities as compared to genus and species. Families are characterized on basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of plant species. Among the plants, for example, three different genera, Solanum, Petunia and Datura are placed in family Solanaceae. Among the animals, for example, genus Panthera comprising lion, tiger, leopard is put along with genus phallus that is cats in the family phallidae. Similarly, if you observe the features of a cat and a dog, you will find some similarities and some differences as well. They are separated into two different families, phallidae and canidae respectively. Order you have seen earlier that categories like species, genus and families are based on a number of similar characters. 
Generally, order and other higher taxonomic categories are identified based on the aggregates of characters. Order being a high, higher category is assemblage of families which exhibit a few similar characters. The similar characters are less in number as compared to the different genera included in a family. Plant families like Colvolvulaceae, Solanaceae are included in the order polymonials, mainly based on the floral characters. The animal order Carnivora includes families like Felidae and Canidae. Class This category includes related orders. For example, order Primata comprising monkey, gorilla and gibbon is placed in class Mammalia along with other Carnivora that includes animals like tiger, cat and dog. Class Mammalia has other orders also. Phylum Classes comprising mammals like fishes, uh, amphibians, reptiles, birds, along with mammals, constitute the next higher category called phylum. All these, based on the common features like presence of notochord and dorsal holoneural system, are included in phylum chordata. In case of plants, classes with a few similar characters are assigned to higher category called division. Kingdom all animals belong to various phyla are assigned to the highest category called Kingdom Animalia in the classification system of animals. The Kingdom Plantae, on the other hand, is distinct and comprises all plants from various divisions. Henceforth, we will refer to these two groups as animal and plant kingdoms. The taxonomic categories from species to kingdom have been shown in ascending order starting with the species in Figure 1.1. These are broad categories. However, taxonomists have also developed subcategories in this hierarchy to facilitate more sound and scientific placements of various taxa. Look at the hierarchy in figure 1.1. Can you recall the basis of arrangement? Say, for example, as we go higher from species to kingdom, the number of common characteristics goes on decreasing. Lower the taxa, more the uh, characteristics that are member within the taxon share. Higher the category, greater is the difficulty of determining the relationship to the other taxa at the same level. Hence, the problem of classification becomes more complex. Table 1.1 indicates the taxonomic categories to which some common organisms like housefly, man, mango and wheat belong. Taxonomical aids Taxonomic studies of various species of plants, animals, and other organisms are useful in agriculture, forestry, industry, and in general, knowing about bioresources and the diversity. These studies would require correct classification and identification of organisms. Identification of organisms required intensive laboratory and field studies. The collection of actual specimen of plant and animal species is essential and is the prime source of taxonomic studies. These are also fundamental to the studies and essential for training in systematics. It is used for classification of an organism and the formation, information gathered is also stored along with the specimens. In some cases, the specimen is preserved for future studies. Biologists have established certain procedures and techniques to store and preserve the information as well as the specimens. Some of these are explained to help you understand the usage of these aids. Herbarium Herbarium is a storehouse of collected plant specimens that are dried, pressed and preserved on sheets. Further, the sheets are arranged according to the universally accepted system of classification. These specimens, along with the descriptions on the herbarium sheets, become a storehouse or repository for future use. The herbarium sheets also carry labels providing information about date and place of collection, English, local and botanical names, family, collector's names, etc. Herbaria also serve as a quick referral system in the taxonomical studies. Botanical Gardens these specialized gardens have collections of living plants for reference. Plant species in these gardens are grown for identification purposes and each plant is labeled indicating its botanical or scientific name and its family. The famous botanical gardens are at the Kew, which is in England, 
Indian Botanical Garden, which is in Havra, India, and at National Botanical Research Institute, Lucknow, India. Museum Biological museums are generally set up in educational institutes such as schools and colleges. Museums have collection of preserved plants and animal specimens for study and reference. Specimens are preserved in containers or jars in preservative solutions. Plant and animal specimens may also be preserved as dry specimens. Insects are preserved in insect boxes after collecting, killing and pinning. Larger animals like birds and mammals are usually stuffed and preserved. Museums often have collections of skeletons of animals too. Zoological Parks These are places where wild animals are kept in protected environments under human care and which enable us to learn about their food habits and behavior. All animals in the zoo are provided as far as possible the conditions similar to their natural habitats. Children love visiting these parks commonly called zoos. Key Key is another taxonomical aid used for identification of plants and animals based on the similarities and dissimilarities. The keys are based on the contrasting characters generally in pair called couplet. It represents the choice made between two opposite options. This results in acceptance of only one and rejectance of the other. Each statement in the key is called a lead. Separate taxonomic keys are required for each taxonomic categories such as family, genus and species for identification purposes. Keys are generally analytical in nature. Flora, manuals, monographs and catalogs are some other means of recording descriptions. They also help in correct identification. Flora contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of plants of a given area. These provides the index to the plant species found in a particular area. Manuals are useful in providing information for the identification of names of species found in an area. Monographs contain information on any one taxon. So we are done with the first chapter of biology, the living world. I hope it helped you to listen and learn. And don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and if you find this useful, share it with your friends. Bye bye.